at last count, 4chan had about um, what Google's reporting on. It's 18 million unique visitors a month, which makes it the um, the largest English-speaking internet forum outside of social media sites. So that's that's pretty substantial. Um, it's yeah, it's huge. Exactly. Um, it also generates a similar level of activity to YouTube. So in terms of user activity and user con contributions and stuff like that, it's, it's up there. And that's a feat that's been accomplished without any venture capital, any marketing or promotion budgets, ever making a profit. It's an entirely a, a kind of grassroots thing. And so, especially as well, the rise of, of the individual who started 4chan, this kid Christopher Poole, who we often call, know, know as Moot, who's sort of increasingly becoming a little more high profile in terms of the venture capital scene in New York, and he's got a new venture called Canvas, which is still up in the air whether or not he's going to be able to sort of create a, a, a monetizable version of 4chan or not. Um, but his rise, and as well as the size of the community that he's been able to amass, I think is, is a bit of a kind of a storming the gates of the traditional authorities in, in social media and Web 2.0. Uh, if you read some of the, the popular press about um, Moot, uh, he's often kind of portrayed as the anti-Zuckerberg, I guess, in a lot of ways. And the fact that, you know, he's been so successful at creating this community, and the fact that, you know, 18 million people every month express a desire to participate online in a place where their act activities aren't connected to their real life, you know, is, is really profound. And it goes against sort of the dominant rhetoric of the end of privacy and, you know, um, Zuckerberg himself has said that if you have two identities, it's just a lack of integrity, et cetera. And so there's certainly a, a critical mass of people who would definitely disagree with that. I think that's challenging the rhetoric of authority that's emerging in that sphere. Um, now, there's also Anonymous, who emerged out of 4chan in 2006 and spent a few years kind of, you know, uh, doing a lot of juvenile pranks and kind of just disruptions and stuff online, raiding other websites, you know, saying things they're not supposed to say and stuff. But recently, they've um, really transitioned away from that sort of pranking aspect to become a, a fairly viable and effective uh, political force, both online and in real life. Um, they've just sort of a recap of stuff that they've done in 2008. They, uh, they made headlines for protesting uh, the Church of Scientology. You may remember the kids in Guy Fox masks outside Scientology centers all over the world. Uh, that was 2008. In 2009, they, uh, they sort of helped with some of the the stuff that happened around the Iranian uh, election protests. In 2010, they um, launched uh, organized denial of service campaigns against the music industry as well as the opponents of WikiLeaks. And in 2011, they played a significant role in the online aspect of the Arab Spring. Um, so they're out there, they're doing stuff. And what they've done is they've taken this radical anonymity that is present on 4chan and tried to turn it into some kind of workable ethic for organizing and, and being an activist. Um, they take their status as kind of a, a leaderless, mercurial, um, group very seriously, and um, so anyone, anyone at all, can take up the banner of anonymous and do something. They don't police its usage, uh, and in particular, what I find really interesting in my own work um, is that anyone within anonymous who begins to accrue any authority, to accrue any individual social capital, rep uh, reputation, and all this kind of stuff, or anyone who acts like a leader, it gets chastised. They get, they get sort of taken to task by the rest of the community. And uh, we saw this not that long ago. Um, just last month, Anonymous kind of descended into a brief period of civil war as some of the people who were behind AnonOps, um, a website, one of the more high profile, high profile nodes in the Anonymous network, uh, sort of came under attack from the rest of the community for acting too much like leaders. Um, and so this kind of um, really staunch anti-ego ethic that's present in the community has led to this real interesting uh, intergroup dynamic where authority is pooling and dispersing in ways that we're really only beginning to understand now. And so that's, that's something that I'm looking at right now in my own research and stuff and something that I'd love to talk about and, and hear from you about as well. And lastly, I want to talk about LulzSec, uh, Lulz Security. Hopefully, if you've been paying attention to the news at all, you've seen them. They've kind of been everywhere uh, lately, and they're the ones who were sort of hacking Sony, and they've gone and they're pretty much a hack-a-day program. There's, they're, they're doing something pretty much every day. Um, and while they're not nearly as anonymous as uh, Anonymous or, or 4chan, they've obviously got an identity, they're lulzsec, they have a Twitter account, it's, it's centralized, all this kind of stuff. I think they're kind of disrupting authority in a bit of a different way. Um, they're an example of what Dana Boyd, a researcher uh, out of the Microsoft Research Institute, uh, she talks about uh, hacking the attention economy. And I think uh, lulzsec is a really good example of this. Um, not only are they, you know, sort of messing with authority in a fairly traditional sense in that they're making Sony and other big players look kind of foolish. Um, they're also doing so in a way that is generating a real significant amount of media attention for them. 
right? Their, their sort of their sense of humor, their, the spectacle that they attach to some of the things that they do, the sort of, um, like just the, the way that they use social media in terms of Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and all these kinds of things have um, garnered them a lot of sort of followers. They've, in, in a month, they've picked up half uh, or a quarter of a million Twitter followers, you know, and there's a story about them in the news every day, right? So if you kind of, if you're willing to concede a little bit that LulzSec's goal is great hat hackers, which again, I think any one of us could explain to you if you're not familiar with the term. Um, if you can see that their goal isn't necessarily just to hack some, right? It's not about successful hacking per se. It's about reminding sort of the masses that have lapped up on the shores of the internet over the last 10 years that maybe they should be a little more careful with their personal information, right? Letting, piercing through the rhetoric of, of Amazon and eBay and all these people who want you to feel very comfortable spending money online and sort of showing the realities of it, about how it isn't very secure and all that kind of stuff. And that's generally the great hat mission. And if that's what LulzSec is up to, they've done an absolutely fantastic job. And they've done so without any real technical skill. The hacks that they're doing are fairly basic stuff. Um, I'm not a hacker, I don't have the, the knowledge to do what they do, but the security community is kind of pouncing on them and being like, oh, these are just a bunch of kids with like computer science 101 and they're doing all this kind of stuff, but that doesn't really matter. And that's an interesting play on authority online because it's not so much about technical skill, which was what it was about for a long time, and more about how to have a knowledge of the lulls and the attention economy. And so these kids, they're, they're really young, like they just arrested one of them, he's 19. They're the most successful great hat hackers of the last decade. And they did so without any real profound technical skill. And that's certainly interesting. And just I want to close a bit by reminding everyone that we're sort of talking about the future of authority as well. We're not just talking about authority in the present. And I think that becomes really acute when you consider the average age of the people that are involved in all these communities. Right? I just mentioned the 19-year-old kid from LulzSec. But you know, the average age on 4chan, and I'm sure Lee can attest to this, is probably about 18 years old. You know, um, the people from Anonymous were really well represented in the youth that were packing to here Square in Cairo. It's, it's young people. And you know, as someone who's fairly young myself, um, you, know, you can disagree with me, I guess, if you want. But I think we've lived through an era where young people have watched authority um, embodied oftentimes by political influence, but mostly just by money and capital kind of undermine democracy through lobbying, through marketing, through campaign financing, and all this kind of stuff. And what we're seeing, I think, in, in this, in 4chan, and Anonymous, and LulzSec, and all these related groups, is a recognition by young people that authority, in the traditional sense, is a barrier to democracy now. Um, and I think that's what uh, Paul Mason, who's a columnist for the BBC, he wrote this awesome article called 20 Reasons Why It's Kicking Off Everywhere About the Arab Spring. I suggest you go take a look at it. But in it, he mentions that what he sees is that you have a much better understanding of power nowadays. This is that the, the first kind of power that, that Sharita was talking about. And that the youth don't necessarily see things along the lines of class or economics and all this kind of stuff, but rather just about power. Who has authority? Who sets the agenda? And they become really good at screwing with the people that have that authority, right? And so anonymous, lulzsec, 4chan, all of these things are becoming these sort of I, I'm, I want to call them mimetic gateways, almost, for people that have a uh, desire to experiment with disrupting hierarchy and disrupting authority. You know, and we should definitely expect to see a lot more of them. Um, that's actually an anonymous slogan, expect us, and I think that's uh, fairly accurate for what we should expect to see as we, as we move forward. And lastly, um, just to go full circle with authority, what's great about all these things is there are these really decentralized forms, but they're great at getting stuff done. Right? They're in the news, they're achieving things, they're accomplishing stuff. And if you're familiar all with the history of the internet, the history of hackers and programmers and open source developers and all this kind of stuff, getting things done is the, sure, the surest and most direct route to authority. 